Go with me tonight to the book of Luke, the 16th chapter, and the 19th verse. Tonight's subject is mentioned 31 times in the Old Testament and 23 times in the New Testament. Of 162 texts in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, which speak of this, Jesus spoke 70 of these. Jesus spoke on this more than any other subject. I want to talk to you tonight about a subject long forgotten by the church of today, and it is hell. Amen. The Bible speaks of a rich man that in life had everything he wanted, but we find him in eternity and torments. This was reality, not a parable. It don't represent the grave. It is a true story. Amen. Amen. Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. So he had a good life. Everyone wanted what he had. Yeah. <laughs> the Jews of Jesus' day concluded that riches were the favor of God and, pro and poverty was the curse of God. We're doing this today, too. Come on. Verse 20, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. He had nothing. Come on. The people of his day didn't want to do... They didn't want anything to do with this man. Amen. Verse 21, And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. None envied this life. The beggar wouldn't fit in the prosperity gospel of today. Amen. Verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Many times lost or saved, our lives are pretty much the same. We have good days, we have bad days. We pretty much have the same kind of days. Psalms 73 and and three, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Amen. We have to look past this life. Come on. Life is a vapor. Don't last long. Come on. I believe James said yeah. life is a vapor. It is short, but eternity is a pretty long time. Come on. No angels carried the rich man, if you notice. Yeah. He was just buried in the ground. I believe I would rather eat with the dogs, uh, the crumb, eat crumbs with the dogs, and go to heaven than eating at the rich man's table. Come on. The reason the rich man went to hell, I believe, is he put all his faith in his money and didn't ask for forgiveness. He didn't put his faith in God at all. Amen. As Brother Billy sung, I'd rather be in a deep, dark grave and know that my poor soul was saved than to live in this world in a house of gold and deny my God and doom my soul. Amen. Verse 23, And in hell, talking about the rich man, he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Not just one torment, torments. Amen. He was separated from God. Yeah. No God, no hope. No God, no peace. No love, no forgiveness. Come on. Without God, nothing. No friends, no family. Nothing. And 
received Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. There ain't no mercy in hell either. Come on. They're begging. Please give me another altar call. Yeah. But they don't get it. No mercy in hell at all. Come on. Somebody needs to tell the lost about Jesus. Come on. Amen. There aren't any unbelievers in hell. Did you know that? No one in hell is an unbeliever. There ain't salvation there either. The rich man repented, but was too late. Amen. Listen, an atheist will believe after it's too late. Yeah. An atheist will believe in God after it's too late to repent. Amen. Back to the verse. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Yeah. There is lack of water. Thirst beyond imagination. Come on. Verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember, one of those torments is perfect memory. Yeah. You can remember the altar calls that you sat through. Come on. You can remember John 3.16. Perfect memory. Amen. Verse 25. I'm going on in verse 25. That thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So it's opposites. Amen. Now it's the opposite of when they were in life. Verse 26, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. There ain't no way of getting out. Come on, amen. Verse 27, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. He's saying, send him a preacher. Yeah. Come on. Verse 28, For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Yeah. Luke 16 and 29, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Talking about they had the scrolls Amen. of Moses. They had the scripture to listen to. Yeah. And if they didn't believe, they didn't believe. I believe that there is millions of voices saying, send a preacher to my family in hell. Come on. And... They have the books. They have the scriptures. They have the prophets. They have Moses. They have Jesus. They have more than they had when the rich man went to hell. Come on. If it takes us hearing the voices of the people in hell to get us to talk to save sinners, well, I guess that will have to do. There are many people in hell who wish they had another chance. As I said, no mercy. Amen. Verse 30, And he said, talking about the rich man, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Verse 31, And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, through one who rose from the dead. If they don't believe the prophets or Moses, then they probably won't believe someone who's raised from the dead. Amen. If a rich man could write a letter, a letter to his brothers, here's probably how it would go. To my five dear brethren, 
I hope this letter finds you in health and happiness. I am, I am writing to you from a terrible place. I don't want you to come to this awful place of torment. We believed a lie. We thought having money and the right friends would take us to heaven. See, brought up faith and money. Yeah. Do you remember Lazarus the beggar? What a mess of skin and bones laying at my gate. Full of sores and starving. I never had time for someone like that. I always said let the government take, let his family take care of him. Yes, we were religious people, my brothers. But thou have to accept... But you have to accept Jesus to make it to heaven. What I want to tell you is you must truly be born again. Then your heart is changed and not full of the empty religion that we trusted. He said empty religion, meaning like Jesus ain't part of the religion. He ain't in that religion. Empty religion that we trusted. Please call on the name of the Lord while there is time. Please don't come to this awful place of torment. I can see Lazarus beyond the gulf in paradise. He is at peace and I see no more sores on him. Amen. So, wait, so about heaven, if there's any sores on us now, there won't be in heaven. Amen. No sores. He doesn't look sick like he did before. Oh, if I could only be there with him and not in this place of woe and endless hopelessness. I can never leave here. It will never change no matter where I turn to see faces with evil, with eyes full of emptiness and torment. I've seen so many of my friends here, yet in their face I see no more friendliness but emptiness and pain and agony. No more a kind word of friendship, but only screams. What is 70 years compared to forever? I would trade all of my, my worldly wealth that I had and lay at the gate with the dogs if I just had one more chance to make it right. Please, brethren, warn our family to wake up and pray. Don't be lost. Don't come to this awful place. Don't come to where I am. There is no escape. That gulf, uh, that fixed gulf is back in there. There is no escape. I am forever doomed, cast into outer darkness. I can hear the horrors of weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says there will be gnashing of teeth. Amen. I am on fire, yet I won't burn up. That's another thing. You'll be on fire, but you won't burn up. I can feel the worms crawling all over me, yet... Yet they will not die in these flames. I cry out and plead with God to let me die. But there is no answer. No hint of presence. No gently breeze of His mercy. Only the dry hot wind that burns forever and ever. There is no place of comfort here. The flames, the smoke, the smell of burning skin. Each tomorrow is like today in hell. Endless torment and pain and darkness. Please, my brethren, don't come to this horrible place. His letter will be the same today to the lost. Except he would start by saying, It's been 2,000 years Amen. and my torment has only just begun. Amen. His plea is still the same. Go tell, go tell, and go tell. Amen. We need to pray, God, give me a burden for the lost. 